Welcome to the video on freezing the master production schedule. In this video, we will understand the term freezing the MPS. So what is meant by freezing and what are the different considerations? Now assume that you have the following MPS for an item, let's say X, Y, Z. So this means that 150 units of an item needs to be manufactured in week two as well as in week seven. So here we are assuming that the lead time of manufacturing this item is one week. So the initial start of production happens in week two as well as it is being delivered in the same week and same thing for week seven. Now in order to manufacture these quantities, we need to do a lot of preparation work like procurement of raw material to manufacture these items in these quantities. We will also have to set up the machinery with the specifications required to manufacture these items as they may have specific dimensions or specifications using which they need to be manufactured. Now let's say someone tells you in week one that hey we don't need to manufacture 150 quantities in week two. We want to manufacture a different quantity. In that case, these changes will turn out to be very costly for the organization. So last minute changes to MPS can turn out to be very costly for the organization. Now, if at the last minute, the quantity is increased to let's say 250 or let's say 300, what it means is that the quantity of raw material to be purchased from the vendors needs to be increased at the last moment. So the vendor may ask for a premium and may charge you more than what they would charge in normal circumstances. Also, since you are going to ship 150 units as per the original plan, you would have ordered the truck or the logistics capacity to ship the material in this quantity to your customer. But if suddenly the quantity increases to 250 or 300, you will have to change that at the last moment. What that means is that again, you may have to pay extra or it may also happen that the mode of transport may not even be available and so the shipments may get delayed. On the other side, if the quantity is decreased, let's say to 50 instead of 150, somebody tells you one week prior that, hey, we need to change the quantity to 50. Then it can result in unused material sitting in the inventory. you would have already ordered a couple of weeks back based on the lead time required by your vendor. Now, this material that you have ordered, you will have to keep in your inventory till the next requirement to manufacture arrives, which will be in week seven. So for these reasons, many firms freeze or disallow changes to a portion of the MPS. So freeze means disallowing changes or allowing very minimal changes to a portion of the MPS. Now there are primarily two types of time fences which are commonly used. Now what is a time fence? 
so time fences are used to freeze the MPS so during these time fences the MPS is frozen in different ways so there are primarily two types of time fences first is the demand time fence and second is the planning time fence now let's first look at the demand time fence now this is a time period within which the forecast is no longer included in total demand and supply calculations only the customer orders so only the customer orders are considered now during this period very few changes are allowed to the schedule which are absolutely necessary neither the master scheduler nor the computer can reschedule the MPS quantities during this period only the senior management can allow changes when it is absolutely necessary so this time frame is typically at the beginning period from the current period so let's say in this case the demand time fence is this period here I'm in short writing DTF for demand time fence okay so what this means is that during this period only the customer orders are considered the forecast is not considered and secondly whatever is the schedule that has been defined nobody can change it neither the master scheduler nor the computer only the senior management can change and that too only when it is absolutely necessary so the same concept of demand time fence we have depicted this in a different form so here you can see this first line represents the current period and the time frame from the current period till the next two weeks is the demand time fence so this is a frozen area and only the actual orders that is the customer orders are considered and only the emergency changes are allowed which are to be approved by the senior management now let's talk about the planning time fence now the planning time fence is also known as the slushy zone so demand time fence is the frozen zone whereas the planning time fence is the slushy zone since it is lesser rigid than the demand time fence now generally this time fence covers a longer period than the demand time fence so in this example we saw the first two weeks are the demand time fence and the remaining six weeks that is up till week eight is the planning time fence once the time period for planning time fence has been set up the computer cannot make any changes so this is important the computer cannot make any changes but the master scheduler can override the schedule manually so changes are allowed in the planning time fence however it is very very restricted again it is lesser rigid than the demand time fence and the master scheduler can override the schedule but it has to be done manually so here if we see the planning time fence is up to eight weeks so let me draw this so as depicted on this MPS from week three till the end of week eight this is the planning time fence so point to be noted here is that as time progresses at one point in time this here starting of week six will become your current period and so week six and week seven will be a part of your demand time fence 
So even though currently week 7 is under planning time fence and you may be able to modify this quantity of 150 slightly as and when it comes closer to the current period it will become more rigid. Now as you can see on the right hand side this period from week 3 till week 8 is slushy zone and you have to do trade-offs. What this means is that there has to be a negotiation between the marketing and the manufacturing departments. The marketing department we want to cater to any kind of demand changes that the customers are asking for. Whereas the manufacturing team would want to minimize the changes because that increases their cost. So there has to be a negotiation and a trade off in order to ensure that the decisions made are in the best interest of the organization. Now the time frame after the planning time fence is known as the liquid zone. Any changes can be made to the MPS as long as it is within the limits of the production plan. So in the production plan there could be some constraints because of the capacity etc. So as long as that is taken care of any changes can be made to the MPS during this time frame. Now let us look at some of the considerations for time fence planning. The length of the time fences should be reviewed periodically and adjusted as necessary. So we need to ensure that the time fences are being designed or being adjusted to ensure that they are benefiting the organization. The second point is in order to determine the time fences there should be a cost benefit analysis done between not being able to satisfy customers who place orders during demand time fence versus the savings achieved in production due to the time fence. So of course there is a paradox in this concept of freezing the MPS. On one side you have to be able to meet the changing demands of the customers. On the second side you have to reduce the production cost. So the cost benefit analysis should be done and then the best time fence should be arrived at. 